Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Roldan Muradian. I'm the current president of the International Society for Ecological Economics. And um, today we have a special session of our series of webinars. Um, I would like to thank uh, Gabriel uh, de Castro, who organized this, this, uh, this uh, session. Um, our Gabriel is, is uh, our student representative in, in the board of, of the ISEE. And then uh, we have a guest, a very special guest, uh, Guillermo Gamarra from the uh, Universidad Federal de Ceará, uh, uh, Ceará uh, Federal University in the, the northeast of Brazil, the state of Ceará, from the city of Fortaleza. And um, both of them, uh, Guillermo and Gabriel, will uh, uh, tell us more about the first undergraduate program in ecological economics, uh, a very innovative and um, pioneering program in, in the world, and also in Brazil, who was uh, founded in, in um, 2015 in, uh, at the Federal University of Ceará in, in, in Fortaleza. Um, and now um, four generations of, of, of uh, students has been already graduated from this program. And um, so Dr. Guillermo will tell us more about that and the history and the challenges and the opportunities of this pioneering program. And then Gabriel, as, as a ex-student of the program, he graduated recently from, from it. And as I told you, he's of the, um, a part of our board and will also comment on, on the on the program, the, this pioneering program. So where, why we are talking about this program? And first of all, because it's, um, uh, it is uh, uh, the first, uh, as far as I know, as, as we know, the first uh, undergraduate program in ecological economics in the world and in Brazil. And because other programs in another part of the world, of course, can learn from the experience uh, of this specific program. So welcome, Guillermo, and thank you very much, Gabriel, for being with us. And then I, I will give the, the, uh, the floor to Guillermo to introduce the program. And after Guillermo's introduction, we, we will have a, a discussion. Just to uh, remind you that you can make uh, comments and questions and post questions in the chat um, on the, in the uh, YouTube channel. And uh, also th this video will be recorded, so it will be available um, for watching it uh, afterwards. Um, so if some people will be interested to watch it again or this, uh, share it with other person, uh, the video will be, will be available, right? So uh, thank you, Guillermo. Then I will give you the floor to, to give this overall introduction of the program. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I appreciate very much this opportunity to talk about the bachelor's degree in ecological economics. I believe it would be very useful uh, in another moment to invite the current uh, coordinator of the of the course to give more uh, um, to provide you a, a better pe perspective of the current uh, politics and uh, arrangements that are being made uh, within the coordination of this course uh, perhaps another moment well um, our objective here is to talk, of this talk, is to provide a perspective or an overview of this eco-eco course, as I shall call it from here on, to encourage the participation of those people attending. I believe most people attending here are, it's a younger audience, maybe I'm not, I'm not sure of it. But anyway, it's, it's open to anybody. Um, first of all, I think it's uh, uh, necessary to tell a little bit uh, 
uh, where my where does my insertion into eco eco comes from because uh, each one of us has a, a different uh, trajectory and different contributions to such a new uh, science undoubtedly my uh, approximation comes first from agroecology, agroecology as a science. Why? Because I am an agronomist. I have a PhD in biodiversity and most of my life I worked in the fields of agriculture, uh, rural development and rural extension, not in the field of research, much more in, in the applied field. For uh, my entrance into academy, it's a little bit late. Uh, just in the in 2010, that I became a, a professor at the Federal University of Ceará, the UFC, as I shall call it, from here on too. My first contest, however, with ECOECO occurred in the late 90s in Recife, or also here in Brazil. And uh, my insertion into this course, this, this ECOECO course, occurred in 2013, uh, being part of a commission that was, uh, uh, that has the, the, the uh, the role of preparing, elaborating the pedagogic project of this course. Well, currently I am part of the course as a as member of the pedagogic council advisory group of the course, and also participate as professor of uh, agri food systems, and also I act as academic advisor of students of this course too. Well, the information I shall provide here is uh, I extracted from several uh, official documents like the uh, pedagogic project, which is available at the UFC site. Um, it has been updated in 2017. And uh, I also used a, a paper prepared by Professor Aesio Oliveira who was the first uh, course coordinator. This paper was prepared for the newsletter of the Brazilian Society of, of Ecological Economics in 2015, and in which we also contributed uh, to this paper. Well, um, which course is this and where, where does it come from? The bachelor's in, in the degree in ecological economics is located here at the Federal University. This university is located in the Northeast region of Brazil, which is a socioeconomic uh, has particular features. And the main feature, uh, I shall say, is its environmental feature because it is uh, uh, an extensive bioma of semi-arid characteristics and also uh, a little bit uh, uh, depressed in terms of economical incomes. This institution, the UFC, is one of the most uh, respected, uh, respectable or most uh, um, prestigious universities in the region. Um, now, I shall provide a short time uh, timeline, or oh, this, this uh, excuse me, a short timeline, uh, trying to highlight uh, significant periods of the course uh, from the initial ideas, initial movements, and uh, until uh, it's a uh, formal, formally accepted version and currently as it is, is made in practice. I shall uh, express this timeline in four main moments. First moment, it's uh, about 2.010 and uh, it's 
it will express the context and first motivations of this course. Um, this course uh, arises from contemporary uh, dissatisfactions of uh, professors of the Faculty of Economics of UFC. What kind of uh, dissatisfactions were these? Uh, it's the way uh, society and uh, current or mainstream economics deals with uh, environmental, social environmental crisis or civilizational, civiliz civilizational crisis, which currently most uh, uh, fields of knowledge and society as a whole sees as, uh, as being in arising and arising in a very speed way, rapid way. This group, they, they took as, as, a, as main uh, purpose to uh, make lectures, to make reflections, to involve other professionals into the ecological economics. And they had as, as one of his uh, most um, uh, important readings was Georgescu Roegen. This group uh, started to gain some visibility within this uh, economics faculty in the USA, and then uh, it expanded. This, vis this uh, visibility uh, expanded through other parts of the university and also on the society. So we come to a second moment, which is the creation of an extension course in ecological economics, which um, started in 2010, uh, the second semester in 2010, and can, was repeated three times uh, throughout 2011. It, um, it was very, very motivated to this group of, of, of professors because it, it uh, um, call the, the interest of um, a very diverse audience, and most of these people attending these courses, they were they were people uh, already graduated, already working. Some of them uh, uh, in different uh, fields of knowledge. And this really uh, created into uh, motivated this group to continue in this uh, in this direction. Well, it's important to to uh, call to this audience because this audience uh, coming from uh, governmental institutions, private sector, and academics and uh, social movements, uh, it created a, a perspective that the thing was of social importance. So, at, in 2011, we, um, we come to, at the end of 2011, we come to the third quarter, the third phase of this short timeline. That's the rejection of the Faculty of Economics to the project of a course in ecological economics. And it happens in 2012. Well, how was this, uh, this period? Professor Alex Oliveira, he took uh, the, he led the elaboration of the, the pedagogical project of the undergraduate course in ecological economics. They presented it that year to the faculty and the faculty denied it. They were clearly discomfortable because the course would, uh, would be a menace to a kind of economy which, is, uh, which was uh, established né, as, as, the, as the science. Né? And uh, so some 
attempt this group made also to bring and, and to expose this, um, this pedagogical project to other uh, units of the UFC. And they were quite well received, but were unsuccessful in order to uh, really carry out the course. And so we come to the, the fourth phase of this timeline, um, which occurred between 2013 and 2015. This process, this group uh, uh, has passed uh, reflections and frustrations and also motivations, they created a kind of resistance and resilience in this group. And they um, uh, expanded their vision of how this course could be. And they also included new fields of knowledge, new, um, new uh, items of the spectra of the civilizational crisis and so they started to think in climate change and uh, uh, biodiversity crisis and so on and uh, they also learned a lot about uh, institutional relationships and is in this uh, last field that uh, in 2013 these professors, they were invited by us, a group of professors of the um, um, Center of Agricultural Sciences, which I will call CCA, to provide, to, to act as lecturers in a course uh, uh, on agroecology and rural education. This uh, approximation made it possible for the, for the original group to, uh, to expand their, their view and their institutional relations. And so uh, further conver conversations were, were held, not only with these professors uh, that invited them, but also with the di director of the CCA, that's the Center of Agricultural Sciences. And uh, uh, this uh, director, he created, uh, he managed to, to put together people with um, similar uh, worries, similar background and similar perspectives with respect to uh, this civilizational crisis, particularly environmental crisis and social crisis, which are um, quite present and quite urgent in this region, in, in the semi-arid region of Northeast Brazil. So, a group uh, made up of uh, professors of our ecology, soils, degradation and, de and uh, desertification, geographers, biologists, ecologists, and rural extension workers were working together and um, they produced um, an updated uh, program of the course. And uh, at that moment, the, this multidisciplinary commission they really emphasize it and they put it more, more clear the, the need of an interdisciplinary approach to ecological economics. And uh, this was obviously due to their um, uh, position, uh, the, the aperture to, to, to such contributions. And also because uh, these scholars, the CCA, they also uh, brought uh, much experience and uh, new insights that could be useful to ecological economics. And so uh, in 2013, that there was a new uh, program 
this new program was submitted to the several uh, instances of the university. And in 2015, uh, started the first class of this bachelor's degree. It began uh, and it was working at the University of Federal Sierra at the uh, Center of Agricultural Sciences. Um, the course then uh, has a, was uh, built to have a formative period in at least eight semesters and a maximum of 12 semesters with an annual entry of 15 students. So it's working until now, it's working in this way. But what was the mission of this course? Its mission is to train professionals with high ecological awareness, capable of critically understanding the relationships between environment, society and economy to better intervene in reality. It strongly, strongly emphasizes local reality. And it's also strongly emphasizes that this local reality wouldn't focus, but would provide a better insight into a wider reality. That is, uh, the course looking at the chief problems of our own reality would also provide that basis to uh, global reality. That's the idea. And uh, the aims, uh, the professional, uh, the aims for this professional was to provide expertise in teaching and academic research, uh, studies and research on social, economical, and environmental fields together. Uh, socioeconomic and, and environmental planning, development of uh, management in these fields, and also to provide consultancy of government agencies, um, private companies, NGOs, or other um, organized uh, social movements. Um, to do this, uh, this course, it has been uh, a major effort was made to create uh, a structure that would uh, incorporate uh, these main fields of uh, uh, economy, nature and, and, and social fields with um, theoretical and, and practical experiences and uh, so the course was structured in four uh, units. These units incorporate many of these um, contents, particular contents. But I will tell you here uh, the, the main units. The, main, the first unit uh, is economy and ecosystem limits. The second unit is impact indication, indicators and public policies, semi-arid and social technologies, or social technologies for semi-arid too, and uh, a unit of pedagogical guidance and uh, um, uh, completion of uh, course thesis. These four units, they are linked together, trying to put into each semester um, theory and practice, uh, uh, environmental, social, and economical issues together. That was the effort. It was, uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's, um, it was an effort quite, <laughs> quite, uh, how we say, desafiante. <laughs> uh, uh, it's challenging. Uh, yeah. <laughs> challenging. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, it was a very challenging uh, situation for us because, uh, as you know, we, most of us uh, professors, we are, we were um, 
driving into specific fields of, of knowledge. So I am agronomist, thought I am agronomist with one foot in, in biodiversity, with one foot in economics, but my main field is agriculture. And so each one of us. And so putting all this together is one, I believe, one of the main challenges for us. I hope I provided you a, a basis of what this course is. I, will, I could go on a little bit more, but let's let uh, Gabriel talk a little bit and open the opportunity for the audience to, to ask and to propose things or provoke us too. Thank you. So thank you very much, Guillermo. Very uh, enlightening um, presentation, introduction. And um, I, I would like to say that it's, it's, this program is, uh, is really pioneering in, in, in Brazil because the Brazilian universities are still, um, you know, dominated by um, monodisciplinary, you know, mentality. So to create a interdisciplinary undergraduate program is quite uh, challenging as uh, as he said in the brazilian context uh, um it is worldwide but more, specifically more in the in the brazilian context uh, which for example faculties are uh, still very much divided into areas of specialization um so and um um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by, um, by the fact that you have um, um, created this, this interdisciplinary program. I have several questions, but I, um, I, we have still a half an hour or so to discuss. I would like to, to ask uh, Gabriel about his uh, experience. And uh, um, my first question to Gabriel will, uh, will be, why did you choose this program? And, and why you like the most since you have recently finished. Um, maybe you can tell us more why you have chosen this program and, and what you like the most and um, what has been your uh, experience and general experience uh, completing this undergraduate program. We can start with that and then we can um, pose other questions to both of you, and I uh, would like to ask also the, the audience, people in the audience, to, to write the, their questions in the, the chat. So, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, as Professor Holden said, I am Gabriel De Castro. I guess you can see my name in the transmission. Uh, I have recently graduated from the undergraduate program in ecological economics here in Universidade Federal do Ceará. Uh, I began to uh, prepare myself to go on with the studies within the area of ecological economics uh, as a master's in a master's program. So uh, I'm really committed to being an ecological economist uh, in the terms that Professor uh, Guillermo just described to you. So uh, I can begin to speak about the, the program, uh, answering the question that Professor Holden poses to me. Uh, my, first, about my experience and why I chose this program to be my area of concentrating, uh, concentration of, of undergraduate studies. As Professor Hodan said, in Brazil we have monodisciplinary programs mostly, so you can start uh, an, engineering, an engineering degree, but you, as an, as an electrical engineer, uh, for example, which was the course I, uh, I began to study first, uh, before I, I changed to ecological economics, uh, you will have several topics within that, that discipline, that area of e electrical engineering, without ever being able to really study in any uh, any level of depth, 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 the, the profoundness, uh, anything outside that field of concentration. Uh, so in Brazil, at least, it's very difficult to uh, go away from this monodisciplinary logic 
of forming a both a researcher, uh, a student, a professor, uh, or a professional to the market positions of society. Uh, in every area, it is very, very difficult to uh, avoid being caught on that that logic of hyper specialization, if we can call it with that name. So the reason why I chose that course was, first of all, because it, the, the degree in, in ecological economics is first of all because it offers the opportunity for a student like me who has a wide array of interests, uh, although they are uh, condensated with some specific directions that I want to pursue. Uh, to me, the course offers uh, the opportunity to study uh, things in, in the field of economics, uh, of ecology, of uh, of so uh, sociology, uh, even anthropology, which is one of uh, one of my preferred areas, it offers me the opportunity to study and to get work done in, in these areas without ever uh, being um, to, without ever being led astray uh, of a particular direction that I impose. Uh, to my studies, it, it's the frame of reference uh, inside of which my studies make sense and, and have unity. Uh, in the, the program of ecological economics, uh, I found the opportunity and the means to do that in practice uh, of studying many things, but without uh, being led astray in, in, in this interest. So I am interested in particular by theory of development, development theories and post-development theories also. Uh, in, so in the course, I and to, to speak about post-development, for example, is to have not only an economical lens, uh, lens uh, to to read society and societal uh, events and, and logics and dynamics, etc. Uh, you have to also have a social uh, perspective, a natural perspective to to think about environmental problems, for example, and to found that perspective. Inside a economics pro, uh, degree in Brazil, for example, it is very hard. Uh, I, I don't know how is the scenario outside Brazil and in European uh, universities or maybe in North America and Canada. I don't know which which the situation is is there. But for us right here, it would be very difficult to pursue uh, this interest in, in something like post development without. Uh, Basically, uh, you wouldn't have the the instruments inside the program you were doing in engineering or in economics to study a, a topic like that. In the ecological economics degree program, uh, I have found much material about uh, environmental problems, environmental dynamics both at the point of view of the natural sciences uh, and the social sciences. Uh, I have I had the opportunity to study. Uh, it's, it's a bit hot right here. <laughs> uh, I had the opportunity to study <laughs> to study uh, many authors in the area of sociology, of contemporary sociology in particular, because I could have, I could go to other de departments of the university because our degree it it uh, it has some of the cargo uh, horaria. Uh, some of the hours we have to 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 complete to 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 obtain the degree, uh, they authorize us to go to many of the departments and centers in, inside the whole university to have contact with that different knowledge. So I studied sociology, I studied economics, I studied sciences of nature, I studied philosophy, and again with that condensation, that that coherence, that a, a researcher must have to to do work that has value and to to even to orient his his learning uh, throughout his, his career. So in Brazil, I don't think that there are there are many programs that offer that opportunity, and that was why I chose to be a student in ecological economics. As of now, I don't regret it at all, and. It, it has offered me many opportunities of growing uh, intellectually, uh, socially, because I, 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 get, I got to know different people from different backgrounds, 
that I didn't found in the in the previous program I, I was in in the univers na Universidade Estadual de Campinas, uh, Campinas uh, State University here in Brazil is is also it is also a very uh, prestigious university. But even there, uh, I couldn't found the people who are who were from such diverse backgrounds and ages and with different areas in, of interest and concentrations. People from all paths of life that I, I couldn't I couldn't find in, in other places I found here in, in ecological economics. So I, I would say to uh, respond the, the the question that Professor Hodan posed that the main virtue of this program is the diversity both of peop both of people uh, who are involved with it and the the intellectual directions that one could take can take without losing his his sight of being the being a, a a researcher that has his concentration area has a specific team that he can uh, pursue that he ha he can think about uh, he or she of course can think about can write about and that in, upon which he can construct uh, an intellectual path uh, in the highest sense of the word uh, to, uh, in the area of ecological economics uh, or in more uh, specialized uh, topics such as environmental problems, particular environmental problems in semi-arid northeast North Brazil, for example, for example, and that would be the, the main virtue of the program. Thanks, Gabriel. A very nice experience, I guess. And um, I would like to congratulate both of you uh, because I think this is a uh, it's a very interesting and um, very innovative uh, program uh, um, due to its, its uh, interdisciplinary profile uh, because it's a kind of convergent. I'm, I have we have put here the program in uh, the overall program um, in the chat, so you can check uh, different courses that are offered, and it's a combination of geography. Uh, anthropology, economics, but also uh, courses in, in natural sciences, and, and agriculture, and ecology, and uh, uh, which make it uh, quite unique. Um, uh, but it reminds me uh, some of the undergraduate programs that already exist in other parts of the world. There are cold and environmental sciences in some part of the world. So um, I have a question for, for Guillermo. <clears throat> Maybe he can tell us more about the history of the program. Uh, why did you choose the, the, uh, the, the name Ecological Economics and not other uh, name like, uh, for example, Environmental Sciences or, or even Agricultural Sciences because um, you are in the center of, for Agricultural Sciences? Um, so why why ecological economics and not other other name? Oh, well, first of all, ecological or ecological economics it provides us a, a common field, which other disciplines or other name would not place. Um, as I said, I come from agroecology. My, my, my background is that. And, and uh, it's common for us to understand agroecology as a science, a movement, and also as a practice. We are, in, in, we are also a political movement. And then that's uh, which characterizes now agroecology. And in all these in all these uh, moments, or in all these phases or, or places where agroecology is de is developing, economical ecology is present there uh, in many ways, in, but in very very many ways. For instance, if you uh, try to understand um, uh, the um, excuse me. If you try to understand the, the agri-food system, you will have to go back 
to what are the theories, what are the, con the concepts that can provide you that uh, comprehension. And then you will go back to what? <laughs> to um, the metabolism of, of uh, society with nature. And there you find ecological economics. The, the, the fields, the main fields, as uh, one of the, of the heads of this, this discussion has been people quite active in, in, in ecological economics, like the Mexican Toledo, and also like the Spanian, uh, the man who wrote the Ecología de los Pobres, uh, who, what's his name? Uh, well, sorry. <laughs> And uh, yeah. <laughs> Martinez Alier, yeah. Uh, one is anthropologist, I believe, and the other one is, is an economist. And uh, both are within the field of ecological economics, but also they have one one feet in <laughs> one foot in 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 our ecology. Why not to create a course which would face both new sciences? I would say that those emergent sciences, those sciences who believe uh, and work uh, consciously into creating theory, creating instruments and creating um, society uh, awareness of um, the need of, 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 of a new way to, of making science and, and politics. Uh, it's a good question because I believe the idea would be that, that we could put together. Uh, I s still didn't abandon a dream, which I shared sometimes with some professors of the ecological, ecological economics course, that is to create a, a post-graduation in which would face this, the new science of sustainability. And there, there will be placed in a, in a place of, of, I could say, not equality, but imbalance, agroecology and uh, ecological economics. That's one reason, because I believe and, uh, and I see and I saw at the moment, particularly myself, and uh, I think I was one of the most enthusiastic in the CCA. And I said, yes, there is a course and we will make this course work. I believe geographers, biologists and ecologists had similar motivations. And we said, yes, there is an opportunity and there is uh, a group which is, uh, has already experienced yeah, they were experienced people, though none of them are um, uh, neophytes <laughs> in the field. And uh, I think it's um, that must be the main reason why we choose ecological economics. I'm talking from my side, but from the other side, from people who came to CCA which is this group of professors of economics, they had a, a stronger motivation. They really wanted to create a different, a difference to, to delimitate, to establish uh, differences, positive differences, and to prove and to develop science in this field. So I think that, uh, there are different motivations that lead us to choose ecological economics and not another money. I think I... I... Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. if we but, uh, yeah, Gabriel, please go ahead. The, the name ecological economics is, uh, I, I guess, it is a proper name to the pro for the program because, as Professor said uh, at the end of his... his uh, uh, of his... Uh, speaking uh, of his talk uh many of our our professors that uh, created the program they they seek to establish a new age of looking to uh the economic system in particular uh that isn't 
it's, it is not only uh, from perspectives identified with, with perspectives already existing, such as Marxism or uh, developmentalism or, or any other uh, already consolidated uh, uh, schools of thinking in, in the economics. Uh, the aim of the course is to create a new professional called the ecological economists, whose main uh, frame of analysis is not only of uh, direction to, to the economic system, uh, as it is it, it, within one of these perspectives I mentioned, but, all, but also with a clear conscience about the societal uh, landscape within the, the within uh, the, the, the economic system, inside the which uh, the economic system works in, functions in, and that the, also the conscience that that society, it's inserted in a nature system or nature systems or, or the environment, uh, as you may want to call it. Uh, so the, the new economists, the ecological economists, must have at all moments the, the, the consciousness that these problems, uh, they function, the, the, these realities of economical, societal and natural worlds, they, they function uh, together. And you can't comprehend the logic of one without comprehending the logic of the other, because they intervene uh, one in another to, pro to, pro to produce the realities we face in the real world. So uh, I guess the ecological economics is a is a name is a proper name to 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 identify the program with because it it is only in the ecological economics economics perspective uh, may uh, such as Georgescu's Nicolas Georgescu's work or later works of Herman Daly and Josh Farley or whichever per, uh, perspective of new uh, researchers that we know that we put inside the ecological economics course. Uh, they they stick always to that perspective of, that perspective of thinking about the economic systems without ever uh, forgetting that they are inside a societal system which has its own logics and its own thinkers in, in other disciplines of scientific knowledge knowledge and the same goes to the natural sciences and the natural world so we we are shaping uh, in fact a new economy a new economist that uh, wants to be capable of doing that analysis, uh, uh, overriding the necessities, the necessity of a professional of a professional economist that is only concerned with monetarily uh, expressible systems and and forms of value, and that only recognizes uh, 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 measures of wealth that are measurable both with money or with looking to the production of goods and services. Uh, we, re we recognize and think uh, from a place that, that affirms that affirms that there are ecological, uh, that there are ecosystem services that nature provides that may not be expressible through, through uh, money measures and, to, uh, and from uh, comparatives of how much goods and services it, it, it produces. But it is, anyway, fundamentally important to preserve that, that those resources and those services. Uh, it is important from an economical perspective. And at the same time, we, we aim to preserve social practices social values, social forms of organizing, organizing communities, human communities, and political arrangements, all of which are not uh, aggregated, are not uh, recognizable in the theories that dominate the uh, mainstream eco economics thinking. E even today, where the environmental preoccupation is uh, a bit more clear, is a bit more visible, in the economic in, in the economics discourse, uh, so because of all that, I think the ecological economics name is is a proper name to to design to refer to to our program, and we we think that 
uh, step after, after step, we are being uh, well succeeded in producing that professional. But only time will tell. Professor Roland, uh, please let me say one more word. Uh, you please, please ask why ahead. not uh, other fields, other fields like um, environmental sciences or things like that. Um, I think uh, one of the main reasons also is that uh, ecological economics is providing a new field, a, a new paradigm. Uh, most of the course, and, and I'm not, uh, I'm not intending here to to make criticisms to, to to other courses, which I think I believe they are relevant for for the moment in, the, in solving uh, particularly environmental problems. But uh, there is a, a, a tendency to repeat, to try the problems with the same glasses to try the problems with the same instruments. And what ecological economics provides is a new way of, it, of, of, of reaching the comprehension and also uh, asks us to develop instruments for facing this crisis that, well, we are not uh, discussing the crisis, we're discussing the course. And I think this is one of the main reasons too, because that's what, what called me, that's what called the geographer, that's what called the, ecolo the ecologist to, to the course. If it would be another name, I'm sure we would have stood in our own places. So ecological economics was a call, and that's important to say. Thank you. So thank you very much. And I think your answers were very convincing and I think it was the right choice. <laughs> uh, but also make it uh, unique. Uh, unique, I mean, in Brazil and worldwide. So it's very, very interesting. And one of the features, I mean, we have only a few minutes to finish and like eight minutes or so. But um, we should uh, have more sessions like this than us in Portuguese to, to you know, to convince uh, people to to go to Fortaleza, to which is not very difficult because it's a very beautiful city, <laughs> to follow the program there. <laughs> um, so we should organize something like that for the Brazilian Society for Ecological Economics in, in Portuguese, and why not in Spanish as well? Uh, because Guillermo is from Bolivia, so we can have this uh, another session in Spanish to convince uh, Latin American students to come to. To Brazil, um, but one of the features I liked very much of the program is that you pay a lot of emphasis on field work. Uh, so you have this course, um, integrated field work, trabalho de campo integrado. Um, so maybe very briefly, uh, Guillermo and Gabriel, you can comment on that. What what is it about? And um, and one of the main uh, learning uh, purpose of these uh, courses, there are like uh, five or six courses on field work, which is very unique as well, um, as compared, for example, my program in my in the undergrad program in economics where I, I work, which basically has no, you know, uh, uh, field work. <laughs> it's very, very rare to do field work in economics here in the, in the fac faculty I work. Um, so maybe, but we have only five minutes, so I would like to ask you to be very, very, very brief and um, <laughs> sorry that uh, we are running out of time. And then um, you can also say your closing words because we have to finish on time. Uh, so let's, let's start with uh, Guillermo, then Gabriel. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm very grateful to hear, to hear this question because I think this is one of the particularities and one of the most challenges. Uh, we say usually in, in the university, in the Brazilian university particularly, it's clear that we need to put together uh, education, research and extension. And we really don't know exactly how to do. <laughs> now it's mandatory for all universities, all courses in Brazil have to put the extension 
into their uh, system, educational system of each of these courses. And um, I believe this is a, a very nice opportunity, especially for the course of in, in ecological economics, because we already uh, plan and we already think, uh, were thinking of these uh, moments called uh, Trabalho de Campo Integrado, uh, five Trabalho in the Campus Integrados, that, that means uh, 70, 75% of the, of the semesters people would be trying to put together all this uh, situation of education contents, that means contents, and uh, research, that means uh, elaborating thesis and uh, extension, that means uh, um, providing or, motiv or motivating uh, changes, local changes, where uh, the course goes in. And um, now we have the opportunity to rethink this and to put it back to the, I mean, to, to, to give an answer to the university and say, well, we have expertise in this. And where does this expertise come? That's that's important thing. It's not within the university. That expertise, I, I believe the most expertise, and I'm saying not only uh, relevant, not only for, for ecological economics, but for university as a whole, is the expertise in rural extension. We have lots of expertise in this, and we have a lot of uh, uh, um, lessons. Uh, much lessons are not the best ones. Uh, the way we were dealing, and, and we are still dealing in, uh, in, in Brazil or in, in, in South America in particular, uh, we have not too much to congratulate about the, 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 how a, a rural extension has developed. But maybe there, is the, the, there are the seeds of uh, comprehension and uh, establishing, particularly in the course, how are we going to... Uh, to go farther, more than just visiting one place and talking about that place, but how university can establish a communication which may involve both us as professors and, and, and as students and society where we go, but really involved in, in this transdisciplinary dialogue. And I will say this is an opportunity we have now, and uh, I believe it's it's uh, an important moment and the university as a whole, but in particular for this course because this course already ha has it in, in 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 its program, so we already have the structure. We already have that that structure of each semester. Students are intercalating. Uh, contents of social contents, economical contents, and uh, 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 nature contents, or I mean, and how to put this together into one situation. We go to field, yes, okay. We need to put this into a dialogue with local people, but a real dialogue, which may involve us and which also will uh, will ask of us a compromise. We shall return, but maybe we will be better uh, welcome if we return construction, something new or something uh, community is uh, trying to. And uh, you said me, I don't have to talk so much. I believe uh, we have this uh, this semester and maybe one more to put it in, into practice, uh, to review how, how our perspectives are, and we have one semester to put into practice and to say, well, we are okay. 
Maybe we will have to learn much more, but we have a basis. And I think this is the, uh, the main challenge and the main opportunity we have now. Thank you very much for your, for your question. Do we have, do uh, you have some? Yeah, uh, yeah, we have to, I mean, we have to close. We have half a minute or so. So if you want to say some closing words, and I would like to thank yeah, again, uh, Gabriela to Guillermo. To whomever says <laughs> to us after this, this presentation, uh, in another hour, uh, some people could be here in this, in this hour. But I thank you for your, your attention. And I would like to say that the response that Professor Guillermo gave is very convincing and properly adapted to our our reality, because uh, I've been in much of these many of these visits, and the practical result is not only that that we get to know the communities, many of them traditional communities, but we we see uh, in in, uh, in a practical way the 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 instruments and the ways that that they use to preserve. Uh, environmental resources and, and wealth in practice, practical wealth. So that's a lesson in economics that I guess every economist should have the opportunity to, to learn, but sadly they, they don't have that. Uh, so, uh, and many of our students, they, they, uh, they finish the, their courses doing work, final works uh, that address problems and challenges and uh, creations, uh, creative perspectives that come from these communities. So the, the field work has that effect, that, that practical effect, and it's a positive one. Uh, I can assure that from a student's perspective. Thank you very much again. Thanks, Professor Hodan, and thanks, Professor Guillermo. Thanks, thanks. And uh, well, thanks to the audience who has been patiently with us during this hour. And um, congratulations again for your program. You have to be very proud of it, um, of this innovative, uh, profile and and uh, and the fact that you have already um, completed uh, four courts, four generations of uh, students. Um, I'm sure there will be a, a, a brilliant future for for the program. And um, thanks again for being here. And um, let's repeat this in in other languages so so people. Uh, can also get access to your program and, uh, and the kind of innovation, ed, 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 educational innovation you have uh, adopted that can be replied, uh, applied in other parts of, of Latin America, for example, which would be great. So thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>